Hello guys, how we doing? Welcome back to the Free Hammers. It's Luke here. I don't usually do two videos in a day, but I read a really interesting article after I made the rice video about Mark Wilburton, um, the coach that is toast. Now, um, obviously, he's left West Ham. Um, and you know, by all accounts, it did start getting a bit frosty um, between him and Moyes and maybe between him and some of the players as well. There are some rumours. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But we, what we do know now... Um, in an interview that he's done recently, I think it was on Sky Sports or one of those big um, channels, he they asked him about you know his time at West Ham and you know winning the cup and stuff like that, and obviously he speaks highly and said he enjoyed his time there. Um, yeah, and it was quite telling words, I have to say. He said that, um, as the thumbnail says, if I did not leave West Ham this summer. Um, me and David, David Moyes that is, would not be friends anymore. Um, this I've done this to save our friendship. You know, he says he has a lot of mutual respect for him, but at times it was getting um, really difficult. Um, you know, a real clash of football philosophies was his actual words. He said, um, you know, we know he was brought in to, you know, bring a more maybe progressive style and a passing style because that is how when he was manager of the clubs that he's managed like QPR etc um, he he plays that more attacking style and possession based football um, and you can see that we were trying that arguably maybe was trying that at the beginning of the season and it didn't quite work out um, and then obviously Moyes resulted back to try to keep us up in the end um, so definitely there has been some sort of it's not working out. Moyes obviously didn't trust him, or you know, vice versa. They didn't get on, and then, like I say, Warburton's come out and said that you know he's so used to being the number one, the manager who makes the decisions that it was hard for him to you know see Moyes basically making the mistakes that he's did. And we've seen it with Kevin Nolan when he kicked that iPad, um, you know, and lost his rag as well. So I, I reckon it may have been quite toxic at times. Um, maybe on the training ground as well. Um, yeah, so it's a really interesting one, really interesting. And it maybe shows how, you know, Moyes is maybe not as open to these new people. Um, you know, we know he trusted Irvine. Um, and, you know, he's, he's had coaches that he trusted. And he needs, and this is a big thing going forward now with West Ham, this new coach, David Moyes, needs to be able to work with and he needs to, you know, be able to, do a challenge and you know be able to take criticism, um, which is something that appears Moyes doesn't ha have the ability to take. Is this criticism and maybe a new philosophy of ideas? Because the only man he did trust was his right hand man, Alan Irvine. Um, this all leads into you know a coach going into the last year of his contract as well. Um, in David Moyes, you know, is a, is a high level coach going to come in and think mm, you know the manager could be gone in a year or even you know bad run of games West Ham you know it's a lot cheaper to sack him now and really the only reason he has been kept on is because it would look really bad to sack him after winning our first trophy and, and, and we've all sat him and said he deserves that time none of us particularly want him to stay I, I would say but um, you can understand and you can hold your hands up and say yeah he deserves that time um, another interesting thing I thought off the back of this is the fact that there are a lot of players that seem to have wanted to move and a few more rumours about players wanting to move now. We know, you know, Antonio was clear that he wanted to go last summer. He wanted to go in January. He's been very vocal on his podcasts as well. Um, Soufal, Lanzini... Um, you know, we know Lanzini's wife now, you know, put something on Instagram during the season. Um, the treatment of Four Nails. Four Nails hasn't come out and said he wants to leave and there hasn't been any rumours about that. Um, you know, we've had Crow before that. We've got Skamaka now. We've got, um, you know, Paqueta being linked to Newcastle. Again, that may just be all smoke and mirrors and I'm, you know, putting uh, four and four together and getting seven. Do you know what I mean? Um... But yeah, it's interesting that, you know, is, is David Moyes this real toxic character? I think there's, I don't know how much of a role Stuart Pearce had at the club when he was there. But obviously he's, um, 
he left and you know that was a little bit weird how that come about um so like i say is is this the Moyes effect you know is this the effect of Moyes staying i'm not saying war but i'm not saying warburton was was the answer by any stretch of the imagination but you know were players getting frustrated with Moyes not taking on new ideas was nolan nolan clearly was we've seen that um antonio you know not Playing different football, we've seen Declan Rice, who definitely will leave. We've seen Declan Rice with the comments that he's come out with, you know, in terms of um, during the season where it was like, oh, if you set up like that, you know, you, you're going to lose. You know, we you, we have to be more progressive. And again, this, I don't know. I, I, listen, it, it will take a lot to make me very un, uh, make me unhappy, really unhappy with West Ham because I've just had the best day, best week, best you know, end of a season of my West Ham life. But I'm it's not I'm not filled with confidence going into this new season. There seems to be a um what's the word I'm looking for? The the, the results of what's been going on, the toxicity at the club and the Moyes effect seems to be breaking out a bit more. You know, we're seeing it now. Now it got to the end of the season. You're seeing it. And, you know, again, it's with Moyes as manager going into a transfer window with one year left on his contract, we're looking at players. And they will think it. They will know it. They will be going, OK, David Moyes wants me, but will the next manager that comes in wants me if Moyes leaves at the end of the season or West Ham going to bag, run seven, ten, seven, eight games um, and he gets the sack? It's a gamble for a plough. It is. It is a gamble for a plough. Um, the quicker this Tom Tom Stedden guy gets in um, and hopefully is allowed a sort of a free roam to actually do his job properly. Uh, like I say, you might not see the full effects of him in the summer. You might might take a window or so to do that because obviously he's got to come in and it, he might not. They might not be able to get the players he wants straight away. But yeah, um, it's it's a. Uh, it's quite a crossroads for West Ham this season in terms of the rebuild and what we do with it and managers getting the last year of the contract, certain players getting older, big captain leaving, um, how we replace, how we adapt. Yeah, there's a, like I say, there's, it's an interesting one. It is. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think I'm being a bit conspiracy theory here or you think there is a bit of method in my madness. Um, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying loyal. Thank you for liking the videos as well. Really, really appreciate it, guys. It'd be nice if we can get a few more subscribers. So, you know, tell your mates about the channel as well. You know, I know there's loads of West Ham fan channels, but um, yeah, get us out there, guys. Until next time, come on, you hands. Keep believing. Let's go.